Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today, we are covering Hashtag Alive, which is a Netflix original, I believe. Yes. And I realized that for the previous two episodes, I have failed to recognize what country a film originated from. So just to... One was fairly obvious. Yeah, the... Yeah. (laughs) So Tetsuo, for anyone who's not familiar with Japanese, that was a Japanese film... And then a, a Chinese ghost story that naturally was a, a Chinese film. And Hashtag Alive is actually a Korean film. Yes. And it came out in 2020. Yes, but it is the only movie called Hashtag Alive. So. I'm just putting it for context for later. Oh, yes, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> context is good for this one. <laughs> Yeah, for this one especially. Yes. But before we go into the review, let's grab our cups and talk about tea. So, ooh, scrapey noise, how dare. Um, I decided to embrace my noble heritage and drink the Plum Deluxe Queen's Blend green tea. <laughs> that eye roll, I love it. <laughs> Sorry, I almost hurt myself rolling <laughs> In the back of the head. <laughs> you want to explain what's in that one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's in, um, <laughs> it has green tea, apple pieces, orange peels, blue corn flowers, calendula, bergamot oil, lemon essence, and vanilla essence. <laughs> cool. So I'm drinking Bigelow's Perfectly Mint Classic Tea. And it's got black tea and spearmint. How common. <laughs> well, you know what? It's all you need. So. Uh, I mean, simple teas is sometimes the best teas. And especially like, I, I, <laughs> oops, <laughs> I will say I am a sucker. <laughs> I am a sucker for my mint teas, especially whenever you have allergies going on. Oh, or anyway, but all right. What? Nothing. Oh, wait, what? (laughs) Nothing. What were you about to say? Uh, That mint teas are great for allergies and that for a good couple of months, I was drinking a mint green tea every morning. Nice. So, yep. Helps wake you up. Yeah. Clear out the nostrils. Yep. (laughs) But anyways. That's what I'm hoping for. (laughs) Yeah. Uh. But my allergies are not kind today. Hmm. Always on a recording day. <laughs> Always. Yeah. Never fails. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to the summary, shall we? But yes. Mm-hmm. And thank you, Plum Deluxe, for allowing us to continue to do what we love. And for our tea sippers out there, bring yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. And I'm still wondering what you were wanting to summary. say. Okay. Rah. Okay, a summary for hashtag alive. The so this guy, I don't know, would you say early twenties? He still lived with his parents. Yeah, I feel like early twenties. Okay, this guy in his early twenties that you later find out like lived with his parents still, uh, wakes up to find out that there is a rapidly spreading uh, unknown infection throughout the city he gets the the text the emergency text message he sees like um he's in a a, the eighth floor of an apartment building he looks down and you see all of the chaos of the city and it's just him surviving in isolation and you just get to see that you get to see how he survives yeah spoilers he lives (laughs) But anyways, <laughs> for entertainment, 
I would rate this a 7.25. It's like I couldn't quite give it a 7.5, but I didn't feel like it deserved a 7. Like it, it needed to be higher than that. Like I, I will be honest, I am not typically a zombie movie person, but this movie just checked all of the boxes for me. It's like, it's kind of weird because it, it kind of is your typical zombie movie, but the way that they flesh out the characters and bring like these interesting scenarios makes it feel a lot more grounded and realistic. Um, but yeah, it's like the like the emergency texts and then the news and stuff. I felt like that was um, pretty realistic. Like the being in, not being in that scenario because I've never been in that scenario before. But I could easily no, put myself in a zombie scenario before. <laughs> yeah, I could easily put myself in this person's shoes and feel the the panic that. Um, this character was feeling for that situation. Um, the zombies, they did an excellent job with the zombies. Like Absolutely. they, I feel like they went above and beyond to make them look really terrifying and threatening. Um, the, the, the main character seemed kind of dumb, but, um, but his feelings and emotions that he conveyed did feel very genuine. Um, like there's this part where he's like, uh, drinking and he just breaks down crying because he believes, I mean, at that time he didn't know for sure, but, um, he believes that his family is dead and it's like, you don't really see a lot of zombie movies that allow the characters to go through those kind of emotions of loss and, and stuff like that. It's like they're just so concentrated on survival. But because he's isolated. It's like yes he's focused on survival. But once he kind of has that handled. He then starts processing the emotions of the, the potential losses that um, he's he's had. Um, but uh, the movie has a lot of really good tense moments. And what I really appreciate is it's not the the super dumb moments because i feel like some zombie movies they purposely make the characters act dumb so that way these zombies get alerted and then you have this scene and then you're just banging your head in frustration like this scene did not need to happen but i'd say the majority of these scenes they were completely like in that situation you could totally see an accident happening or, or whatever. And that moment coming. So it, it, the zombie scenes where these tense moments come up did feel pretty genuine. Um, but yeah, overall, I, like I said, I'm not a zombie movie fan, but, uh, I will say that my favorite zombie movie and continues to be my favorite zombie movie is train to Busan and so I will say that to me, this movie wasn't quite as good as Train to Busan. But I mean, this was a great, solid zombie movie. Like this is how you do a zombie movie for sure. But um, I, I hope in the future to see more solid, like in-depth zombie movies like this one for sure. So... I give this one a 6.5. Oh, that's... With the potential of going up. Oh. In the future. That was based on a first viewing. There were some things that annoyed me. <laughs> but overall, it was really good. It kept you interested. There were some slow parts, and most of them are where he's just wandering around the apartment being an idiot. <laughs> and eating all his food and drinking alcohol and not saving water while he can and <laughs> just you know generally frustrating me but <laughs> on the whole it's it's a really good movie they convey a lot of genuine feeling reactions and emotions nothing really feels very forced in the movie or inorganic 
um, you can actually see, especially after the, the last couple of years that we've had most of this stuff happening, pretty much the way that it happens in the movie, and we'll get to a lot of that in the realism. Um, I loved the female character. She is great. She was a total badass. And she was an actual smart person. And I loved it. And I was living for it. Um, and she had amazing ideas and interesting and unique traps. And she was very thoughtful. So I, I really liked that. Um, they did hesitate here and there, which I feel like can be expected. And again, we'll get to some of that in the realism. But it is still kind of frustrating to see some of it. <laughs> um, I feel like there was one moment in particular of Movies Got a Movie where she left a, a string tied to a baseball in the street with the zombies, what which they actually never call zombies in the movie. Um, <laughs> but that leads to her getting injured shortly after, and I feel like it was unnecessary and kind of out of character for her, to be honest. Um, yeah. But otherwise, it it seems like a very, very solid movie. Um, I do appreciate that even though you kind of call them zombies, they never actually use that term. They actually instead call them monsters. Or the infected. And they actually treat it like an infection. Mm -hmm. They never once say that they're dead or they come back from the dead. It's just a very fast-acting virus. So after you get bit, shortly after, you are infected and you are exhibiting signs of said infection. So they don't really say how it started, no. which I would have been interested in for sure. Um, it's not entirely necessary and it didn't really necessarily hinder the the overall entertainment value of the movie, not mm -hmm. knowing it's just, you know, curious minds want to know. And they could have like snuck it into the news or, or something like it's like, we have theories that it originated from. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. We have reason to believe it started here due to this. Yeah. Cause it's like in the, the beginning of our own infection, uh, like the news was very quick to say, we believe that it's possibly originated from here. Yeah. And then they modified it as we had more information. So it's like, I feel like I don't know when this was filmed, but I feel like if they had that experience from, uh, then it's like, it would have been cool for the news to say, we believe it's this. And then they continue to like modify it. They don't show the news too terribly much um which again we'll get to in realism um kid's a gamer <laughs> so i could see him not really watching it too much um i think overall the things that really got me though were just the frustration of him like he has on occasion good ideas mostly to do with technology he mm -hmm. is a streamer and he's, you know, millennial or Gen Z, so it makes sense. But there are other times when he just makes these bonehead moves and it drives me up the hall. <laughs> like, pick he's one. There are times he's doing fine and then he just rolls a one on decisions <laughs> and sucks horribly. So... Uh, it's a little frustrating there. And also um, the badass girl toward the end, she kind of gets like a defeatist attitude at the very end, which I get it. She's been through a lot, but it still seems a little bit out of character mm -hmm. when she's already decided that she wants to live and she's very determined to do so. So it just seems a little, little odd there. Um but it was a very, very enjoyable movie, and I will definitely be watching it again. Cute. Oh. <laughs> Last thing I'll mention on the entertainment. Um, if you're going to put messages on a screen, let the people know. 
what the messages say. Yeah. Read Korean. We rely on those subtitles. Let us know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's surprising the number of subtitled movies where they don't translate it. Because it's like, because yeah. mo- in anime, it's so typical for them to translate the text. Like, they'll just show, like, a store sign and they translate it for you so it's just kind of weird that like in a lot of the live action movies they're like oh we're not gonna translate text it's just yeah we kind of need it yeah it's like it gives more context and um kind of helps flesh out the movie a little bit more and i'm pretty sure they had showed some of the translations for a couple other things earlier in the movie so like the notes that were written from the mom they did translate those and i want to say a text here and there that he got right before he Mm -hmm. lost most service but then at the very end you see all these messages popping up on his phone and they give not a single translation it says messages and that's it yeah and you just see him like looking happy And you're like, why are you happy? Yeah. <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> what are you happy about? Is it just that you got out of that situation? Or did you find out someone else is alive that you thought was dead? Or you're just happy to be going back to civilization or civilization with a pretty girl? Or <laughs> what? Yeah. Share with class. Yeah, which of course... It isn't which isn't the movie's fault, but I just really wish that people that were translating, like I know, giving subtitles for a movie or even dubbing a, a movie or anime is very difficult because not only are you translating it, but it's like it's not like there's one to one words. Like you have yeah, to convey the overall idea. Mm-hmm. And then you have to also think about the different like cultural differences and stuff like that. It's like we get it. It's difficult. But I feel like there could be further improvement on trying to complete the context for the people that don't speak that language to understand. I mean, of course, if you don't uh, if you don't speak that language or you don't aren't familiar with that culture, and the the, the whole reason why we started doing Asian Horror uh, Month is there there is going to be things that we miss, even if we see all of the subtitles, we understand what's going on. There's going to be things because of cultural reasons that we just that completely go all over or over our heads on the importance of it or the significance or whatever have you. So it's just. But it's just, I, I still feel like there's a little bit more that we could get from translations. We could have cleaned a little bit more out of this. Yeah, Pulled just... a little bit of meat out of the story. If only we knew what those messages at the end said. We have very small wants and needs. <laughs> <laughs> We're nitpicky, okay? <laughs> Give us the extra stuff. Uh, but, anyway. But yes. So for uh, realism... This is going to be a higher one, though. I don't know. It's, it's hard to rate, and I'm actually going to be fairly lenient with this one. Yeah, this one's tough. It is, but I think I'm going to give it a six. And the reason being is that the behavior of the people did feel genuine and the fact that each person handled the situation differently. And I did really enjoy that they had uh, three human characters that were very different from each other. So you could see like these extreme reactions to the exact same situation. So that made it really interesting. Um, The, the fact that zombies is inspired by rabies I feel like it it's kind of uh, more realistic the fact that they made the zombies smart and threatening like they can run after you and they're not these like slowly walking towards you 
It's the most terrifying kind. (laughs) Yeah, the fact that they they know how to open doors and (laughs) and they're actively trying to claw their way to you. (laughs) Yeah, because it's like the whole thing with rabies is it just it makes you so aggressive, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you forget how to open doors and and stuff like that. So this type of zombie makes the most sense to me. In that mm-hmm. context, the and I'm sure you're going to mention this too, but the fact that they had the girl have this dumb moment where she was so focused on giving him food that she didn't pull her, the baseball with the string back or even cut it whenever he was the zombie was like walking up. That was that was probably one of the most frustrating parts of the movie because. To me, it's like, oh, if she tossed it and didn't make it through, then my next action would be to immediately pull it back up yes. and then, you know, try the next thing. Yes. But but it, it just didn't make sense for her to leave it there. It's like, she knows that they're smart and that they're probably going to try and just that. Yeah. Even if she knew he was going to try something like he gestured to her to like wait there, I think. But while you're waiting for him to figure out something, pull it back. <laughs> yeah, that that's one of the the scenes where it was a movie's got a movie scene and it yeah. didn't really make sense for the characters. So that that's definitely a huge well, critique. And it's not like her injury came into play later on either. Yeah. So it was completely unnecessary. Yeah, just to have another tense scene. But it's like... Yeah. It, it's like I mentioned before with a lot of these other zombie movies where they purposely make characters do su- stupid stuff. It's like if you can't create a genuine feeling situation where these characters are in like the super tense moment, then don't have that moment. Or, you know, I guess another option, too, is maybe if there is rope hanging from like another uh apartment unit or there's something that the zombie could climb up and they were making their way up and so she could still it's like you could still replicate a similar scene but not make her do something stupid for it but then i guess you it would have to you'd have to wonder like why the zombies didn't try climbing up on the ladder or rope or whatever beforehand but it's like there, there has to be another way um and then the maybe this is me being a little bit too harsh, but I felt like the guy was a little bit too focused on games because it's like the, he's literally in the middle middle of the apocalypse and he has only like a week's worth of food or two weeks at most. And he's over here trying to play video games when the Internet goes out. I'm sorry if I was in that situation and whenever we were in a uh, quarantine not that long ago, I had the news on a lot. And I mean, while it was kind of detrimental to uh, mental health eventually, um, it's like constantly wanting to know more information and feeling more in control or whatever. But he just kind of like lays back and is like, okay, well, I'm just going to chill in my apartment, play video games, and then send these videos about being alive. And it's like, I can understand creating a social movie, or social movie, a social media video to post online to be, to let your friends and family know that you're okay. Like that is understandable. And actually in some circumstances has helped uh, people find uh, loved ones from uh, tragedies or disasters. But to be so focused on games and not even have the news on in the background to see what's going on, that, I don't know, that just felt a little bit too crazy for me. But anyways, that's all I got for realism. I'm going to give it a five. Ah! It's a lot higher than I normally give. Yes. But I still have some problems. So I can see him focusing mostly on gaming. He seems like he's a streamer and 
that's just his way of coping and escaping. So I get it. Not everyone wants to listen to the same thing playing on the news constantly. Um, I know I limited myself in lockdown on news just because one, a lot of it was the same and two, it was all depressing. So, and it was going to impact my mental health. I could tell. So I limited myself only looking at stuff maybe once a day or every couple of days if it was really bad and just going from there as needed. Um, that helped me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and otherwise I was just focused on work because I was still working at the time from home and making sure that we had everything we needed and that way we wouldn't have to go out. So I get it. What I don't really understand and this is really just a mindset thing is him not really rationing out a lot of the stuff mm -hmm. like you see him counting up what he has and everything but he doesn't seem to eat it in a very logical order or anything because he moves the fridge in front of the door and the fridge still has stuff in it we know because big monster dude <laughs> knocked <laughs> over the fridge and a lot of stuff fell out mm-hmm so he wasn't eating the cold stuff first, as would make sense. Yeah, for real. Because utilities are not going to last in that kind of situation. As we see later, I can understand him not really thinking about some of those things, like internet going out, or water not working, or electricity not working. Um, but... Most people would think, I feel like, let's eat the stuff that expires first. Yeah. Or is cold dependent. Let's go ahead and eat that first. I that just, way I can conserve the other stuff that'll last a lot longer. Sorry, I just thought of something. They they cook ramen on one of those like portable stoves after the power goes out. Like, yeah. How did that work? You usually just need a lighter for a lot of those. Or battery in some cases. Okay. That was belie that okay. was believable. Okay. That was camping supplies. And you're not often gonna have electricity when camping. So that made sense. <laughs> Which I appreciate. They found some camping gear and they used it. <laughs> that was smart. I don't see why he didn't try to raid other nearby apartments sooner. Especially yeah. when he saw how limited his food and water supplies were. Yeah. And the fact uh, that he goes straight to the refrigerator to find the food. Yes, because he's an idiot. <laughs> and no cupboards, nothing. Just, you know, I'm going to go straight to the fridge <laughs> when there's no power. <laughs> and even though there was power because the light came on, they were very, very yeah. iffy. They were very iffy and wishy-washy on whether or not the power was working. And yeah, I can get of, it flickering now and the then. the elevators worked. Yeah, the elevators worked. Um, different things around the area worked. The, um, the locks worked, which I guess could be a battery as well, but it just seemed a little weird. Um, and he kept being able to charge his phone. Yeah, their electronics, they didn't really have any issues with the electronics dying. They really had an issue. They had an issue sus. once toward the beginning when he was flying his drone and his headset, the virtual goggles things went out. But he was able to get the drone back with his phone. So clearly the drone itself wasn't out of battery. <laughs> and he was able to charge it again because he used it again later. <laughs> so that's the thing. <laughs> They're very inconsistent with those, especially the power. Um, he didn't put out very many things to try to catch rainwater. He didn't try to set water aside or anything. Like if he emptied a bottle, he didn't refill it, didn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. um, the girl was a lot better with preparation and rationing, planning, and fighting. And most things in the movie yeah. compared to him he tends to be kind of a useless idiot for the most part um 
but that's what makes it so much more frustrating when she does kind of fall down on things. So, um, mm-hmm. I do find it interesting their take on the monsters or zombies, how it is an actual virus. I'm not really understanding how they're still moving as well as they are after 20 plus days of next to no sustenance. And it does look like they are sharing whenever they take down prey, Mm -hmm. but we only see them take down people and it wouldn't last very long if you're sharing it with that many others. So, and you don't really see them like going for any water sources or anything. So I don't really understand how they're able to move and function. I also didn't really see any progression of their starvation because they've had to severely reduce how much they've consumed. That's true. Throughout the month that they were there. So, but they looked exactly the same as when they were first shown. I feel like they would be at least a little more gaunt. So. And more weak and... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stamina low. Sleeping Not a really lot able more. to fight them off as much. Sleeping more. Yeah. Um, they're also a bit inconsistent with whether or not the zombies are attracted to sound. Because there are times when he'll have the TV and stuff going on in his apartment... And making a scene when he's drinking and all. And there's no issue at all with the zombies. But only when he's trying to help her out. Do the zombies try to break into his apartment. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Or when he's walking around quietly. And they suddenly are like, oh my god, you're there. Food. So it's, they're a little inconsistent with that whether or not the zombies can hear or smell or sense them or anything like that. Um, I think it would have been cool to bring into effect the, if the zombies could smell them or see them, like if they're actively looking for them, it does look Mm -hmm. like they can see them. So they haven't lost their sight apart from that one zombie that suddenly doesn't have eyes, which I would love to know the backstory of. Yeah, (laughs) for real. And how he's still walking around, but all right. <laughs> and not bumping into things. Um, but you don't really see them using many of their other senses. So I feel like that was a little bit of a missed opportunity there. And again, a little inconsistent. Yeah, they don't really flesh out the the zombies much. But I will say that was kind of frustrating that while he had tap water, he didn't think that it was a good idea to empty out all of the alcohol bottles and fill it up with with water. After growing up in a fairly strict household, where especially where the alcohol was concerned, um, I can understand the feeling of not wanting to touch it. At all. Especially if you're holding out hope that your family's alive. <laughs> you don't want to get in trouble <laughs> because you uh, got rid of your dad's stash. <laughs> but um, he could have at least kept a couple of the bottles for like antiseptic if he got injured or something. Um, and then use the other bottles to hold other necessary liquids like water. So, that was definitely frustrating. But, you know, late teen, early 20 mind is, well, (laughs) I guess I'll just drink it. Which was a lot of Uh alcohol. I'm surprised he didn't throw up, or them imply at least that he threw up a lot, because that was a ton of alcohol. Yeah. And he would have been severely dehydrated after drinking that much. Yeah, which, fun fact, we kind of went some digging because it's like I had been told that coffee and tea because of the caffeine content actually um, dehydrate you, 
but I did confirm that it's pretty much near impossible to actually get dehydrated from coffee or tea because whenever you drink them, you're still getting plus water versus if you hadn't drank any at all. But of course, if you drink tea versus water, you're going to get more hydration from water versus tea. But with alcohol, that's a, it's a different story. Alcohol, like legitimately like pulls water live. from your organs and actually dehydrates you. Um, so it's like if he, even though they're both dehydrating, if he had to pick like tea versus alcohol, he should just say flat out no to the alcohol and go for the tea. And of course, you know, water would be preferable if yeah. it's available. But That being said, if all you drink is tea, it has compounds that will do bad things to you after a while yeah it can like it increases your chances of kidney stones and yeah stuff yeah yeah like i know um because as a as a teener i had to look up like how much tea is too much tea <laughs> and uh, they say that uh, a person shouldn't drink more than five cups of tea which uh i think is about a liter so i mean you you can drink a fair amount of mm-hmm. tea and be okay, but... I'll mix it up now and then. <laughs> yeah, but it's like on the counter argument, you also need to balance it with water. Like if you just have your liter of tea a day and you're like, okay, I'm done with my, my intake of liquid, that's not great. There have been medical cases of other people doing that for years and they ended up having severe health issues, so please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, balance it out. It's all about <laughs> moderation. We love our tea, but we do also mix it up with water now and then. (laughs) Yes. Moderation is key. But, um, but anything else for realism? Yep. Um, with the helicopters going out and everything, I feel like they would have put the word out in multiple ways of Mm. the, Mm -hmm. the rescues coming. Um, I feel like also they probably wouldn't be going out there for two people. Yeah, sadly. Unfortunately, that would likely be considered an acceptable loss. So I'm hoping that they ended up finding more and they were just the first two that they found. There were multiple helicopters. (laughs) So maybe it's just like a group thing where they're all picking up people. Yeah. Yeah. I also feel like the helicopter's sound would have attracted a lot more of the zombies or infected. So I can I can see them bringing out multiple so that you have cover for the one that is coming in close to land or to actually land. But... <laughs> You're going to have a problem if you're there too long. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. I feel like that one was almost a bit of a deus ex machina. A little bit. Seemed very convenient, honestly. So, that's fair. And it happened so quickly, too, when he's like, Did you hear about the rescue team? And then the rescue team came. Yeah. Which. You're not sure at first if you should believe the guy or not, because he did just try to drug them and feed the chick to his wife, so. Yeah. 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 Like, that could easily have been a a tactic to lure others out as well, which I'm surprised we didn't see some of that either. Hmm. Of, you know, signals going out. We are a band of survivors. We're helping other survivors come here if you want to help out and stay alive with us. And they end up killing them and taking all their stuff. That would be messed up. But I unfortunately, I could see that happen. I could easily see that happening. And actually, it has happened in a couple other things I've watched. So... (laughs) I could very easily see that happening. People suck. So I still, they never explained how the guy was okay with 
uh, drinking the water while the other two weren't. Like, I know you said that they he could have put something in the glasses themselves, but it's like they never actually explain what he did. Yeah. Disappointing. Yeah, that is a little frustrating. Um, them not explaining how he did it or anything like that. And it clearly didn't last long. It wasn't a very powerful thing. Mm-hmm. It hit them fairly quickly, but it also got out of their system pretty quick after. Yeah. So. Just little things like that. Anyway, that's what I got. Okay. Overall, really good movie. Highly recommend. Um, yeah. It has the potential of going up in rating after a couple of watches, but on the first watch through, that's that's what I got. Yeah, like, if you haven't watched this movie i definitely recommend it like even like as a person that's not huge into zombies i even enjoyed this movie so i think it's one of those movies that everybody can get a little something out of yeah so i do like zombie movies so (laughs) i know you do (laughs) anyway (laughs) but thank you everyone who joined us today and please comment on what you thought of the movie. If you'd like to recommend a movie, game, or tea and keep up to date with our content, you can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and most places you listen to podcasts. And if you'd like to support our podcast, please subscribe, like, and share our content. If you'd like to support us monetarily, we do have a Teespring or and PayPal, <laughs> or we have our affiliate link with Plum Deluxe. It doesn't affect the price of the tea at all. It just allows us to continue to do what we love. And you can find all of the sites mentioned linked below. But until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye! Bye.